Um, my name is Annie, and I have been living with aphasia now for more than three years. Aphasia found me after strokes in 2019 and 2020. During this time, I had some major operations, and I spent a lot of time in hospital to recover and to learn to walk, talk, and eat again. There is a big chunk of time where I don't remember anything. Brett, my husband, tells me that he and my daughter, Sarah, had some serious conversations with the doctors after my stroke, as they didn't know whether I was going to survive. I was desperately unwell. I didn't know anything about what had happened during my second operation in February 2020. But I can remember when I woke up, feeling weird and uncomfortable, and could not talk properly. The room was full of people, both medical staff and family, and I knew something wasn't right, so I stopped talking. I didn't want them listening to me and the way I spoke. I knew inside my head what I wanted to say. I think, but I was also knew that when I went to say something, it didn't make sense. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was really scared, really, really scared. When I was transferred to the rehab hospital in February 2020, COVID-19 became big for the first time and I was discharged fairly quickly as they were trying to clear out the hospitals. They didn't know what to expect with this new virus. As a request, I did not receive any substantial rehab at this time. I struggled along at home, trying to make some sense of my new condition, but still not understanding why I was like I was. I was desperate and I was scared. Sarah, my daughter, sought out a speechy and that is when I started down my therapy path. Mm. By this time, it was June 2020, five months after my last stroke. The scare of COVID had settled a bit and the private speechy was able to make plans for me to have a block of therapy at Rankin Park Outpatient Clinic going each week. This lasted for four months before I returned for therapy treatment. The realisation of living with aphasia settled in and I started to feel very isolated. I had avoided seeing my friends at first as I knew I couldn't speak like I used to, and many of my friends dropped off. I was very lonely. I struggled, and I was immensely sad. However, it was then that I was introduced and welcomed into the aphasia group in Maitland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in Maitland. This changed my life. I loved it from the first day. Everybody treats everyone so well, and it is a wonderful place to be. Everyone is interested and wants to help each other. I especially feel aligned with the women members of the group. I was very sad in 2021 when the group had to go online due to COVID again. However, 2022 saw us back together and I loved it. We have been back now for a long, for a little over a month and I look forward to every Friday and seeing my friends at the group. So how did aphasia change my life? I don't see or talk to many of my old friends. It is too hard. 
as many of them don't understand aphasia and I am a bit I am a bit frightened to talk to them or rekindle my old friendships as I have changed a lot since my stroke. As a result of my stroke, though, I now have many new friends who are also living with aphasia and understanding my journey. Early in my life of living with aphasia, I had lots of troubles with many things. I was able to correctly answer yes or no to questions, but other than this, I found everything about communication extremely difficult. I found it tough to make or say full sentences because I couldn't remember what I had started to say and then I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I had enormous trouble in naming things correctly and I was usually unaware that I hadn't correctly named something. Now, a bit over three years later, I have made many improvements, but I still have some trouble recalling the names of things. Even though I might use the wrong word now, I know if it is wrong, whereas I didn't know this early on. One of my first biggest concerns early on was not being able to read to my little grandson. I had so much trouble understanding each word that I read that I stopped trying. I have been practicing a lot with reading out loud and understanding what I am reading. I am now, I can now read a page of writing and while it may be a little slower than previously, I am now understanding what I have read. Of course my grandson is now too old to enjoy having his grandma read to him. <laughs> but he was my inspiration to drive me to improve my reading. Mm. At first, after my stroke, I was slow with cash and its value. Mm. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though I used to do all the banking in my relationship, now I could not understand any of it. Mm. Brett had to take this over. He had no idea what to do, and I had no idea how to explain to him what had to be done. I think I would probably do this job again now, but Brett does it so well. <laughs> and I don't want this job again. <laughs> um, I am now quick with identifying numbers and cash values. I can add, subtract, and multiply cash problems. I have no trouble in remembering the times tables or the processes of using long addition and subtraction. In the early months after my stroke, I could not go shopping on my own. I was confused with what we should buy and eat. Being in the shops was overwhelming. Brett would also have to come with me. In those early days, Brett also had to cook meals because I could no longer remember how to do it. I was a good cook prior to my stroke and never used a recipe for anything. But now, after my stroke, I cannot remember anything about cooking. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I had taught my daughter my own secret Rissol recipe. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Rissol. No, where am I? Rissol prior to having my stroke. And she still makes the best Rissols ever. Mm. <laughs> So while I can no longer cook 
resolves she can. She has written me the recipe, but they still don't work out the way they used to. So I just really enjoy them when she cooks them for me, which she does really well. <laughs> <laughs> I now go food shopping on my own and can leave Brett at home. I am back to cooking most of our meals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, <laughs> they are not as fancy as they used to be. We have much more simple meals, but I cook them myself. Yeah. Good on you. One of the biggest things with aphasia is that it strips you of your confidence. I lost a lot of my confidence and all belief in myself. I am now a much quieter person than I used to be. I will usually take a long time before I am comfortable to talk in front of less familiar people. However, I now say more at the group than when I first started there. I am keen to ask people questions and attempt to answer questions when I am asked at the group now too. Yes. One of my most favourite parts of my aphasia, still though, is knowing what I want to ask or tell. Brett, but not being able to think of all the words I want to use. This makes it difficult for Brett to understand me. I know there are times when he cannot understand what I am trying to ask or tell him, but together we get through it and make do. My difficulty with finding the words also makes it tricky for me to make other people understand what I am trying to say or ask. I am now, I have now, <coughs> I have found that I am able to say a lot more now than I used to two years ago. And I have strange words. A lot more words. Yes, a lot more words. Mm. I talk so much better now. Mm. Sorry. No, 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 that's all right. That's all right. I used to help, I used to help me when I am stuck on words. I find I can describe what I am thinking. The brain kicks in and sometimes gives me the missing word. In the past year, I have started doing things that I used to do, like taking my grandson to the movies or the local pool by myself. I don't have the confidence yet to take him to the beach on my own. Mm. Last year, I tried going back to bingo, but I found I was unable to concentrate for long enough to play a full sheet. However, in the past few months, I have been back playing a full sheet and have won a game. <laughs> my confidence is continuing to grow with thanks to my wonderful husband and family. I have a group of people around me who are helping me regularly. An OT, a speechy, a psych, an exercise therapist and some support workers and of course my new friends at the aphasia group. So while I do have my moments of frustration, I try to be the best that I can and appreciate everyone and everything that I have in my life. I am so happy to still be here. Thank you for all your support, for all your interest in me, 
I hope you have found me and my story interesting. Thank you. Yeah.